So chances are when you watch Ronaldo do something like that, two things are probably going through your head. Wow, how does Ronaldo curve the ball like that? And wow, how does Ronaldo have such great abs? Um, and I'm regretful to inform you that we only have the answer to one of those questions, and it's probably not the one that you want. Uh, so in doing research for this, we hit the books, and we found something so secret that it can only be revealed to our HBL physics class. So I'll send it over to Cole uh, for an example of how a kick like this would work. Also for this experiment, you're going to want to whip out your soccer ball. Any soccer ball will do. You played, say, soccer in fifth grade, so you definitely have one. Uh, your Fat Max tape measure, who doesn't have one, uh, and your high-speed camera, uh, also known as your iPhone, uh, anyone will do, really. So I'll go over the first kick just so you know what's happening, and then I'll let the other three play. Um, but the unzipped pants on the side are key for success. Uh, set up the ball any way you want, and then just let it rip, and then measure afterwards. So here's the data from those four kicks, and one thing you'll notice is that the longest traveled kicks don't always bend the most, so it really depends more on technique than power. Although power can help, it's really more how you kick the ball, and we'll get into that right now. So how curving a soccer ball works is really represented well by this image, um, and if you're a soccer player, you want to manipulate the spin of the ball, uh, not so much over and under like in the image, but more so around the edge of the soccer ball uh, as you kick it and that can really be represented if we go back to the Ronaldo clip uh, not that part so if you see in Ronaldo's kick um, when he's nearing the ball his foot is nearing the ball it's almost pointed towards the ball but as he comes into contact with it his foot almost becomes horizontal uh, to the ball so that way he can get uh, side spin on it and up and around the goalie as he does in the actual shot with a little help from our good friends at NASA, we actually learned how to mathematically calculate how far a ball bends based on some different factors that we'll get into right here. So we'll solve for the bending of kick two. Um, trust me, this looks a lot harder than it actually is, but I'll try to explain it as easily as I can. Um, so let's first start with a diagram. Uh, first you'll see D1, uh, which is the distance the ball traveled forward, in this case 13.1 meters. Um, and our main goal is to find D2, which is the amount the ball bended per se um, and to do that we need to find R the red line which is the curvature radius um, it looks a bit confusing with that uh, equation in the bottom right but uh, we'll get into the variables right now and you can see all the factors that go into it so uh, here are the variables and one factor in particular that we're gonna take a look at is air density um, so in general, if you're filming inside, this doesn't really play a part in the equation, but if you were filming outside, it would have a larger effect. But since we weren't, we're just going to solve for it at room temperature. Um, and then since there were so many sweaty men in that room, we'll add an extra degree for safe measure. Um, so, and then factoring that air density into the equation, we get a curvature radius of 85.95. Um, and then we can plug that finally into our final equation here, uh, which gives us the actual D2 value, which is one meter. And then if you'll go back to the data, you can see that um, we were a little bit off, but this can be due to um, miscalculations or mismeasurements in uh, the spinning of the ball, the RPM, or even the kick velocity. Um, so we were pretty close, but off by a little bit. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, and to end, I'll leave you with a video of what happens when you throw a bowling ball backwards in Wii Sports Bowling.